Okay, we have a bit of a different episode today, and that is how to sell your services to customers using Kajabi. And you may hear that the audio is a little bit different, and that is because I am right in the middle of our pandemic house refresh, and we have finally made it to the stage where they have removed all of my flooring and the house is actually incredibly empty at the moment and going throughout this entire process it really highlighted for me how important it is to sell your services to your customers to other businesses using Kajabi now not a single one of the businesses that we have used throughout this entire refresh and I'm calling it a refresh because we didn't completely remodel we thought we wanted to remodel we thought we wanted to completely gut a bathroom completely move a staircase from one end of our home to the other end of our home we thought we wanted to do those things but when we sat with the idea when we thought about our family when we had real estate appraisers come through the house we realized that for right now for us what we really want is just a refresh and so we have been using multiple different companies multiple service-based businesses and I as the Kajabian as the Kajabi hero as the person who has started originally with a service-based business as an attorney using online 10 years ago and then watching from the pandemic hitting the entire world and seeing this incredible need service-based businesses we need you to use online tools and if you're anything like I was and you might be just starting out using Kajabi or maybe you've used Kajabi for a while maybe you've never even heard of this crazy system but I would venture you hadn't heard about Zoom back in February either and now all of you know what Zoom means and Zoom is a noun it's also a verb so that's what I wanted to walk you through using the context of our house refresh so the house right here this is everything pretty much everything that we have been doing throughout the pandemic so we are getting new floors we are getting new countertops we are putting in all new hardware we have new lighting new paint tree removal and grass installation so a wide variety of businesses all directly tied in some way shape or form to our home now when you're thinking about selling your services you have to use a framework we all have a sales strategy I have called it North Pole to New York City and in North Pole to New York City you will never forget your sales funnel ever North Pole, you think about cold, igloos, snow, Santa Claus. Those are people that have no idea who you are or what your business is, but you're out there in the world. You have a website, you have a podcast, you have a YouTube channel, you have social media. So North Pole is cold traffic. They want to be able to buy from you. I wanted to buy new flooring. I wanted new hardware. I wanted new lighting. I wanted trees removed. And so initially, I'm the customer down here visiting the North Pole, just trying to find out who provides these services. Now, the goal is to get them to New York City. New York City, pre-pandemic, busy, hustle, bustle, finances, great design, great restaurants, great everything is New York City. So imagine if you have someone that's in the North Pole, picture a map, North Pole, whether it's the, you know, for real North Pole, as in one of the poles, or if it's North Pole, Alaska, which is not actually located at the North Pole, you want to get them from the North Pole, being cold traffic, to New York City, spending their money and buying from you as fast as humanly possible. So if we picture that, you would want to get on an airplane directly there, no stops, no driving, no, not taking a bus no detours whatsoever but unfortunately what most businesses do is we have we put up a website we put up a social media because that's what we're supposed to do and then 
we leave everyone to their own devices. We hope they can figure out how to buy from us. We hope they return. And that just isn't the case. You are leaving money on the table. As a service-based business, your job is to, yes, have North Pole, have your website, have your social media, have all of the things that you're doing to attract people to you. But then your job is to take them on a guided tour and get them to New York City. So that's the that's the name of the game. Now, the other stop-offs when we're going through North Pole to New York City are a lead magnet, which is when people give you their name and email. They give you a way to stay in touch. Just like if you happen to be online shopping and you go to one of your favorite stores and one of the first things that you see is a pop-up window. It takes over the screen or it takes over a portion of the screen and says, hey, would you like free shipping? Or would you like to save 20% on your first order or 10% on your first order? That is nothing except a lead magnet. And that's what we call it in the online world if you've never heard that talk term before. And you enter your name and email and then miraculously Miraculously, the coupon code arrives in your inbox, okay? That is what they're delivering to you. But now they can communicate with you. That business can stay in touch. That business can let you get to know them. It's a beautiful, beautiful process. Then after a lead magnet, you move into, and for some businesses this happens, for most it doesn't. But the first time someone buys from you, that's your intro product, your intro offer. That is simply the very first thing that someone can purchase from you. Then as they continue to purchase from you, the second time they purchase, it's New York City. And we have added more stops to businesses that I've worked with for over a decade. And that is the third time they're going to visit London. The fourth time they're going to maybe Monaco. But it really is incrementally building the loyalty of that customer. So for instance, when I was looking at tree removal, we asked on social media, who did our friends recommend? I knew that much. Okay, let me figure out who's, who is everyone else using. Great, got some feedback from Facebook. Then I can go look on Google, find their websites. Every single person had a website. They had filled that square. Service-based business 101 must have website in this century when you're operating a business. They did that. Done. Now, when they were here, guess what? Not a single company, not a single one in all of these areas. So our floors, our counters, our hardware, our lighting, our paint, our tree removal or our grass installation, not a single person had an opt-in. Not a single person wanted to continue our relationship, wanted to guide me on the journey, wanted to help me be able to buy from them. This is the part that as a consumer, also as a business owner who is so excited and passionate about helping people take a traditional business. I was a lawyer for goodness sakes. And to take this traditional way and blend it into what is becoming less untraditional or less non-traditional, thank you pandemic, huge silver lining, but this is a huge missed opportunity. They dropped the ball, but my guess is they had no idea they were even dropping the ball. And they could have easily had a lead magnet. Now using Kajabi, and I am completely biased, a thousand percent, because I did it the hard way. I did it where you had to buy all of these different tools and learn how to link them up. And honestly, it's for the birds. Like, no thank you, no way, no how. Just find a tool that can deliver and help you run your business. Now, if you're wondering, because you've never heard of Kajabi, and you're like, well, I'm not running an online business. No, but you're running a business, and as I'm walking through this, Every single service-based business, whether it is a law firm, a chiropractor firm, a tree removal, a hardware company, like whatever it is, if you just make it easy to woo the relationship and help me see how to buy from you, hello, your profits will skyrocket because you have an automated onboarding process. So my, let's use my um, grass installation, for example. So we, once we had the trees removed and we were getting grass, it was probably early May, late May, 
And little did we know that you should put your yard in in August or September. No company that we called said, hey folks, I realize you don't know this yet. You want your landscaping to be grass. We had a really high maintenance yard. It was an I mean, crazy amount of bark that we would put in every year, between 20 and 30 yards of bark, a ridiculously high um, maintenance yard. And we didn't want it to be high maintenance anymore. We wanted a low maintenance yard. We wanted more grass for the boys to play on. We wanted less yard work. So that's what we wanted. And we were calling, asking for grass installation. Well, we went to their websites. Yep, that's great. We called, we asked questions. Sure, they come out for a consult. They, you know, give you feedback. At no, they're the professionals. Now, little did we know that you we could have saved an immense amount of watering, an immense amount of babysitting this yard if we had just waited eight weeks. Not a single one of them told us that. That would have been so easy to have gone to their website, opted in, given them our name and email, and then they could have sent us automatically because service-based businesses, you have to scale this. You cannot do this. Well, you can, but it's slowing down your profits big time. They could have easily sent us a one-page guide. Here's the top 10 things you need to know about putting in a yard. Bullet point number five could easily have been if you are in the months of May, June, July, you know what? Hold off. Don't put, this is what you can save. Your grass will come in better if you install this grass in August. Here's the differences between installing in this month and installing in this month. Would have been a piece of cake and would have made me as a customer call them less because every person that we worked with, they all had people answering the phone. They were answering questions I'm sure they answer a thousand times throughout the year. But because we had no other way to get the information, we had to keep calling. So that is why when you're thinking about selling your services to customers, using a tool like Kajabi where you automate it, that we would have opted in, we would have been sent automatically the guide Yes, this is what you need to do. This is how to prepare. This is what to look for, whatever it might be. And that would have made my life so much easier and saved them babysitting me, babysitting the sale. Make it super easy. Again, same thing when we were dealing with the floors and the countertops. A simple opt-in and then let me know, hey, here's the best, here's the top three flooring choices for entryways. Here's the top choices for a kitchen. If you're putting the floor in an open concept home, which is what we happen to have, every room is connected. I love my house. I didn't want to leave my house, but it also made it really tricky trying to figure out what is the floor that can handle in Michigan winter snow boots, ice, dirt, grime, two little boys, and would also work in a bathroom, would work in a living room. What is it that's going to work? There were obvious choices, but I didn't need to go in and spend hours talking to someone. They could have just sent me some videos. Same thing with lawyers and um, they lawyers and chiropractors and dentists and pediatric dentists. Like, dog trainers, you name it. If you're teaching people things online, you've got to provide this. Like you have to have a way to move them through so that then they can purchase from you. So that is what I really wanted to touch on. And the other piece is know what you are selling. The flooring store is not selling flooring. Believe it or not, they're not selling me my flooring or my countertops. They are selling me no more nagging. I had white carpet. We did not put the white carpet in, but the house came with white carpet. I have two small little boys that I want outside. I want them digging in the dirt. I want them playing with sticks and rocks and all those wonderful things. But to get from the backyard to the garage, which is where a lot of their toys are, they had to walk across about 10 feet of white carpet. And so I was constantly saying, 
take your shoes off, take, crawl on your knees. I made them crawl on their knees when their shoes were dirty. But the flooring store is selling me my beautiful home. The flooring store is making me not be the naggy mom anymore. And that's the other piece as service providers. We, I think, get so caught up in the service we're selling. So for instance, you know, I, as a lawyer, I did um, estate planning for many years. I also did trademark licensing for many years. And I wasn't selling a will. What I was selling was peace of mind that should anything happen to the parents, they knew their kids were taken care of. They knew their children were safe. They knew that the right people had the right documents. They knew where to find those documents. They had total peace of mind. They didn't have to worry or panic or, um, you know, once you die, you really don't know anything that happens. But those with older children, the kids felt safe. The kids knew how to take care of mom and dad if they had a stroke. So in a lot of ways, it was total peace of mind. It was having those difficult conversations before they were gone and could never be had again. In trademark licensing, yes, did I complete trademark applications? Did I secure trademark registrations for clients? Absolutely. But I, again, I was providing peace of mind. I was providing confidence. I was providing the sense of security as a business owner that people could go out into the market confidently knowing that their name was their name. They could build their business around that name. And so that's the other really important piece as you are selling your services to customers using Kajabi, using another tool, if that's what you choose, um, to know what it is that you're selling so that in each step, whether it's on your website or your opt-in or your guide, what is it that you're really doing? And yes, you can spend thousands of dollars in marketing and thousands of you know hours taking courses, but quite honestly, most service-based businesses, especially those who may not have even thought about coming into the online world pre-pandemic, you don't have the time. You have no extra time. Your time is full. You're running your business. You're trying to adapt given pandemic. You're trying to open again with the looming thought, oh my goodness, what happens if I close again? Well, every business that I have been working with since March, when we shifted and started working on this house refresh project, they were all in this same instance. But many of them, even the tile company, so the tile company that had to come and take out the entryway tile, they were, we said, you know, hey, you've done an amazing job. You were polite. You were courteous. You were great. We'd love to work with you again. And the guy said, that's, you know, that's great, but my jobs are booked out through December. But he was also really worried that people were going to cancel those jobs. And immediately when I heard this, and I've learned I kind of have to keep my mouth shut because I can vomit my excitement onto people and they're not ready for it. And so instead of it being a great inspirational, motivational, wow, you have so much opportunity, it literally feels like someone just puked on your shoe. Like they don't know what to do with it. And it, 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 it just, it's the wrong information at the wrong time. But when I heard that, all I heard was, oh my goodness, if I was a tile installer, I would have an opt-in on my website that showed people how to pick out the best tile. Because I know there's probably problematic tiles and there's probably tiles that are easier to do. There's probably great places to buy my tile from and there's probably less great places to buy my tile from. And if I had a series of videos that I could deliver to people automatically without, other than setting it up, without having to babysit it, then I can keep doing tile jobs and I can keep bringing people from my website to my opt-in to making their life easy and letting them fall in love with me and buy everything that I have. If I have great relationships with stores or I know, hey, this is the best place, just go online and order this and you'll have great tile. And guess what? If I can't get to your job, oh, you better believe I'm going to show you how to install that tile on your own because I'm serving, I'm helping, I'm not losing money. 
I can have a series of videos that people could purchase. So we're at that intro product level. We're in the middle of a pandemic. I can't possibly get to your job until December, but guess what? Maybe hiring me to do your tile would be $1,000. Well, for $200, I will give you step-by-step -step videos showing you exactly what you need to order from Home Depot, exactly how to use it, exactly how to install it, and you have access to me to answer some questions. Guess what? Done, done and done and done and done. That service-based business is now selling to customers. They've expanded beyond what they could originally do, and they can start to capture this incredible, I'm, I'm always looking for silver linings, the silver lining of being a service-based business in the middle of a pandemic, faced with so much uncertainty, so much evolution, but you can expand. And that is what I wanted to share with you. And maybe if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I'm already on board. Like I've been an online business forever. I've been a service-based business forever. That's what I am. I was, I've been a service-based business online going on 10 years and I love it. Now, I've stayed strictly online because the facts and circumstances of my lifestyle, that's what's worked best. But I also know that in working with hundreds of other service-based people that have physical businesses or physical um, services that they take to other people's businesses or homes, that we can all expand during this time of contraction. And that's what I wanted to share with you. So if you're listening to this and you're like, oh my gosh, Tamsin, I've been on board for years. I love when you talk about this stuff. Maybe you have a friend. Maybe you have your hairdresser or the person that makes your lashes absolutely gorgeous. Maybe you have a friend who's a painter or a contractor. Maybe you have someone in your life that you know they just need to hear this. They need to hear that the possibility is out there, that there's different ways to go about doing things. And I would so appreciate if you would just share this with them because I don't know everybody, but I know that in just this little amount of time, I've encountered no less than 10 businesses that I know for a fact are leaving money on the table because had it not been for me pursuing them, I never would have hired them. And every single one of them had the first piece down. They all had a website. They all had something on social media. And then they had nothing. They had no way for me to enter my name and email. They had no way to send me an email with a guide or a video series or anything, a simple email. Hey, silly person, you're thinking about putting a lawn in in May. Guess what? If you just wait a couple months, your life will be a thousand times easier. And in fact, the grass people, we called them because the grass while it was coming in, it looked to me like tons of weeds were in my yard. Well, it was crabgrass and it wasn't in the rest of our yard because the rest of our yard has been fertilized and taken care of by the lawn people. And so we called and we said, could you please come look at this? We're concerned. So the owner of the business, which was great, drove out to our house, spent about 30 minutes talking to us and then drove somewhere else. So let's say ballpark, he invested an hour of his time. When a simple video that we would have access to that said, hey, if you see this on your grass, guess what? And when I told him, I said, hey, we're just nervous first time grass parents. He explained, hey, it's crabgrass. It's going to die off at the first frost. And then when in the spring, when the rest of your yard is fertilized to prevent the crabgrass, this is all going to get fertilized. So yes, because you put your grass in in May or June when it was that we put it in, this is one of the issues that you're going to have. Again, we could come right back to the helpful guide that they could have sent me when I visited their website and had they had a way for me to give them my name and email, then they could have told me this. I could have saved that gentleman an hour of his time. He's been in business a long time. 
I'm guessing I'm not the first person that's required a site visit on something that made complete sense and could have been explained in a YouTube video in five minutes, less than five minutes. Could have been sent to me on email when I, the person I called and said, the um, receptionist said, yep, yeah, sure, we'll, you know, we'll send him right out. I used up her time answering the phone. I, she could have just sent me a link to a video. You know what? Before he comes out, you want to watch this quick video and see if this is your issue? Would have been like, yep, that was totally our issue. We totally understand. He doesn't need to come out. So that's why I get really excited talking about this. I want to talk about it. And it's why when you're selling services to customers using Kajabi, you're adding to your bottom line. You are scaling your business without needing to clone yourself. So thank you for listening. And again, if you liked it, please share it with a friend that is in your world, that is struggling as a service-based person that doesn't know they can totally expand during this time of contraction and forever. Have a great day.